Hey friends, welcome back. Now we are going to continue our Mer Stack series. This is our e-commerce project. In the previous couple of videos, we have created a couple of APIs. You can see we have created APIs like uh, user authentication, admin authentication. We have created APIs so we can create the categories. We can fetch the categories from the backend and we have also created api so we can add items into the cart you can see cart for slash add to cart we have also created api to add product into the application right so for all to operate with all of these apis we need a front-end application we need an admin application right so we have already created admin layout of our application if you don't know you can watch part four of this series in this video we are going to set up our store now the question is if you don't know what is store, store is something by which you can manage the state of our whole application. Now the question is what is state, right? So let me tell you with the help of a diagram. Here you can see we have uh, a diagram, right? So let's first understand the state. State is nothing new. Every application exists with state. Let's take an example of a simple JavaScript application. There you may create a lot of variables, right? So the, those variables are nothing but the state of the application, right? You are storing information in the variables and then later in time, you are using those variables, you are acting on those variables, you are calling some uh, functions, you are doing a uh, lot of stuffs with those variables. So this, this is nothing but the state of the application, right? So what happened in case of React? So React is full of components. There is no page level concept, right? So in case of components, we share information with the help of props. We pass information from uh, one component to the another component with the help of prop. So you can take uh, example in this. Um, so you can consider this example and you can see I have a root component. So that is uh, I'm representing with a, a big rectangle. And then again, inside the root component, we have a profile component, as you can see my cursor. And again, in the profile component, we have a card component and there I want to display name of the user. So first I have got a name property. Uh, I have created a name property that is name equals to Rizwan. And then I'm sharing this name equals to Rizwan as a prop to our profile component. So we can access a uh, name in our profile component with the help of prop. So you can see props dot name. Now I want to display the name in card component. So again, I have to share this name property with the help of prop to our card component, right? So we can access prop dot name and finally we can display the name. So here is a problem, right? So this is right now three components, root component and inside the root component, we have got profile component and inside the profile component, we have got card components. This is okay right now. Now what happened? There are 1000 components like this components and we have a lot of components, uh, nested components inside the components. There are many more components. So in that case, it is very difficult to manage the state of the application passing information with the help of prop really, really uh, difficult. So to solve this problem, we have got a library that is nothing but the Redux library. With the help of Redux library, we can create an store. Let's say uh, we have a store over here. Uh, let's represent the store with the help of this circle, right? Let's give it a name store. So this is our store. And what we can do, we can store the information in this uh, store. So let's say name. Here we can say name equals to Rizwan, right? So we have a uh, name information in our store. Now, whatever the component needs to access name property, they don't need to pass information like this uh, nested way, like this multi-level inheritance type, okay? So what they can do if let's say the root uh, component needs to access the name property so they can directly access information from the store because this is available globally if profile components needs to access the name property then profile component can access directly name likewise uh, if card component needs to access the name property then card component can access directly the name property like this so this is how store and state works in react.js application right now let's install libraries uh, which are required to create the store. Okay, so let's go to the uh, git bash and this is our application running now Let's install. Uh, let's open a new terminal Increase the font size and here you can see the ls So we have got uh, this uh, these are the files right now. Let's install The libraries which we need to uh, the first library we want is, uh, is to install the redux So with the help of redux we can create the store 
Now React hyphen uh, Redux. So with the help of React hyphen Redux, we can connect our component with the store. So we can access the information from the store. Now let's install another library, Redux hyphen Thunk. So with the help of Redux Thunk, we can uh, we can make API call asynchronously. Now don't worry, I will show you everything. So if you are not familiar with the terms, it's very easy. I will do everything step by step. Now let's install everything as a dependency. So let's hit enter and let it install. So as you can see, the Redux, React Redux and Redux Thunks, uh, all of them uh, has been installed. So this is our uh, React admin app uh, project folder. And here we have SRC folder. We have created components, containers. Now we are going to create a new folder for the store management. So let's create a folder store. Okay, let's hit enter. And also create a folder uh, within the store. Uh, or let's say, keep it outside, right? So we have got a store. Now let's create a folder action okay actions and okay let's keep it as a singular let's say action or better write like actions okay so there will be multiple actions now within the uh, SRC folder create one more folder that is reducer reducers okay so let's first start with a store let's create a file index dot JS. Okay, so here we are going to create the store. So we are going to uh, use a Redux library. So let's install. Let's uh, say create store, and you can see you can you are getting the hints. Now let's enter, hit enter, and you can see uh, we have imported uh, this create a store. So this is not the right way. Oh, let's replace this const because we are using Webpack. We are transpiling everything, so we don't need to follow the syntax, right? We'll say from redux okay so create a store from redux and it it takes two arguments the first one is the function it takes two argument first one is the function a uh, callback function and the second argument is the middlewares right so let's first keep it like that and let's create the store const we'll say store equals to this one and now let's export this uh, in, uh, export default We'll say store let's save this so this is how we have created our store so this is the basic syntax we'll make it complex don't worry and uh, okay now we have got a store we have a uh, index.js file now let's go to your uh, index.js file and here we need a component that is provider so import we'll say provider from uh, react hyphen Redux. So this is library we have installed and we are importing a component that is nothing but provider, right? So use this provider component. So let's wrap your whole application with the pro provider comp component, right? Let's say provider and now let's take this from here and put inside the provider. Okay, like this. So here. Now let's, this provider uh, takes a property that is nothing but store and it takes actual store. So we have created the store you can see index dot store for slash index dot. Now let's import the store from the store folder. So we'll say uh, store. That's it. Now let's pass. Uh, before passing the store, let's attach. Uh, for our simplicity, this is not the requirement. I'm I'm creating a variable store in our window object, and I'm storing actual store. Right. I'm saving that so we can access in the browser. And here we are passing store as an argument. Now let's save this. And now let's check in your application. So there are some problems, right? Compiling. Okay, it is fine. Now let's go and uh, check. This is fine, right? Let's check your, uh, let's inspect your application. And you can see we have got a console and let's reload it. Okay, why I'm getting a uh, form basics, maybe something we'll check later. So we have uh, added a store vari variable within the window. So we'll say window dot store hit enter and you can see we have got couple of uh, members within the store object right so this is dispatch get state uh, replace reducer subscribe and symbol so the important one uh, is uh, dispatch so we can dispatch the actions and we have got get state now let's use get state so you can see what we have right now in our store so we'll say store dot get state and here you can see it is undefined so actually we have created a store but we haven't uh, act, uh, written any 
uh, return any state. So here you can see we have got index.js and here is our store. Okay, so in the reducer folder, I'm going to create a index.js file again. So that is going to act as our root reducer index.js file. And here we'll say export uh, default. And this is going to be a function like that. So this is actually this uh, function I'm creating. This one, let's remove this. Okay, let's save and let's import the reducer. Import a root reducer from that is going to be uh, reducers and that's it. Here we are going to store our root reducer. Let's save this, okay? And let's go to your root reduce. Uh, uh, this is our index.chase file. That's, this is our root reducer. So now here we have our root reducer. And now let's uh, pass, it takes two argument, state, that's the initial value of the state. Let's say name, uh, uh, state name equals to else, okay? So this is our initial state and it also requires second argument as an action. Now let's simply right now return, don't uh, mess with this right now. So we'll, uh, we'll work on it later. So we'll say return state. Now let's go and check your application again. Now let's refresh it. And you can see what we have got. So we'll say window dot store dot get state. So with the help of get state function, we can retrieve our store. So like this, okay? So you can see we have got name equals to reds. Now you know how it works, right? Now let's go again and so this is our reducer, uh, this is our index and we have created a store also, right? So here we have our actions file, right? Now let's work on the actions. So let's create an index.chase file within the actions also, index.chase file. And let's keep it uh, empty right now. Uh, create one more uh, uh, file. So that is going to be the constants.chase. Constants chase so we can create our constants and create a file again uh, that is auth so this is this is going to be our uh, authentication right so this is our auth action so we'll say auth dot action dot chase right so this is syntax uh, you can simply write auth dot chase this is totally fine but for uh, my uh, simplicity I'm writing it so I can make a difference between action and reducer so we'll say redu uh, action auth.action.chase actions auth.actions.chase so this is our first auth actions.chase file okay now let's write an action so how we can write an action export const so this is nothing but a function so this is an arrow, arrow function export const login and it takes uh, i'm going to provide an argument that is nothing but a user argument so here we are going to have like user email and user password so this is an arrow function here we are going to return a function which which again takes an argument dispatch Okay, and this is one, right? So we can dispatch an action. Now let's uh, uh, let's install a library um, or, or don't install a library. Simply uh, first, uh, now let's first uh, see uh, it's working or not. So I will simply say uh, dispatch an action. So let's create a constant here. So we'll say export const user auth constant. That's better, auth const tens okay auth constant and here we are going to say uh, let's say a lock in hyphen uh, request so we'll say same so this is our constant right login request let's save this now let's go to the auth dot actions and here uh, do the login request so here we are going to dispatch an action so dispatch and it takes an object with the type so what kind of action it is it is a login request action so we'll say type and we'll say here auth constants and you can see this is already imported auth constants from the constant folder and here we are going to say auth constant dot login request and you can see the payload also okay so let's get it down and here we are going to say the payload payload you can write anything right now so here we'll say uh, you know what here we'll say login or uh, true okay 
so login request uh, login true so this is just for us example right so this is our first action we have written now let's execute this action so let's go to your uh, component uh, so let's go to your container folder and here we have sign in action index.chase file and now let's uh, import right so before import let's use this index.chase file and here we are going to say export st asterisk everything from and here we're going to say auth auth.actions right so we can directly import this folder we don't need to use this file names right so we'll say index.chase and here we're going to say import and uh, curly braces from and here we are going to say uh, actions right so we'll say actions and now we can use the login function so if you type l you can see it is going to give you hint login right now here uh, let's go to your uh, function so this is our button now let's say on uh, click or basically form on submit so this is our form right so here you can say on submit execute the login action so we'll say log in so here we are going to write an arrow function okay so here we are going to execute that login function and we are going to give an object so that's nothing but a user we'll say email that's email equals to and we'll say res at the rate cmail.com and then password is going to be uh, that is going to be uh, one two three four five six now let's save this okay so when we'll submit this is going to execute and okay so instead of writing like this uh, let's create a new function so let's cut this from here and we'll say a new function let's say user lock in or let's save and write the function here const user lock in okay let's create an object a user equals to email that is going to be a rich at the rate web script dot info password is going to be one two three four five six okay now let's execute the login function okay we'll say log in and we'll pass the user object right let's save this so when we will click on the submit button this form user login will execute and when this now let me tell you the flow so when we will press the submit button then this user login function will be triggered and here we have to say event okay so that's an event and here we have to event dot prevent default so this is what you have to write event dot prevent so it will avoid the default behavior of the browser generally what happened when you uh, submit a button then it will reload the whole page so instead of doing that we will uh, prevent the default behavior of the browser and then we'll execute this login function so this login function will be uh, called and this is nothing but an action so this will execute this code okay so login will take the user object and let's say here so payload will say simply a user okay so this is nothing but email and password so return this and then now let's write the reducer so here we have reducer also so let's create a file again we'll say auth dot reducer dot chase reducers dot chase okay so and let's go your index sorry that's action right so let's delete this and here let's go to your reducer and inside the reducer let's create a folder auth dot reducers.js okay here we are going to create the reducer so this is going to be uh, export uh, default and here we need a state so initial state let's say empty and then action right okay so here we have so let's uh, create an initial state before uh, performing anything we'll say cost and initial state that is going to be an object and this is empty right so we'll, we are replacing this with this initial state let's save this and let's keep it a uh, name equal to res as we are uh, as we, we we were seeing the example right so res 
here we are checking uh, what kind of action it is so it's a switch action dot type here uh, okay so there is arrow we are missing save this so this is a here we are uh, we have got action dot type so we'll match the type case and here we're going to say auth constants dot uh, login request so you can see uh, we have imported this auth constant over here login request and whatever we are going to get we'll say here state equals to so we'll say state and then we'll say break and after that uh, after the switch we are returning that state return state now let's say it's working or not okay so this is uh, our state this is our login request okay now let's go to the action uh, let's go to the page folder now let's reload it and we are good to go we haven't got any error let's uh, empty your pro uh, clean your console and let's go to the login page sign in and here you can see now let's uh, submit this and we have got nothing So here, uh, here we have created a uh, auth reducer, but we are not using this auth reducer. As you can see in the index.js file, we have uh, we have this default uh, root reducer, right? So we have to remove this, and let's say we are going to say import. So we'll say here auth reducer from, and we'll say that is from the file auth reducer. Okay. So the, we have got auth reducer, and now let's use const. And create uh, combine the reducer all of them okay combine reducer so this is again a function we have imported from the redux library import uh, combine reducer and here we are going to provide an object and here we'll say auth and then the value so that is going to be auth reducer now let's uh, create a variable const that is going to be root reducer equals to and here we are doing export default so that is a root reducer okay now let's save this uh, let's go to your store and here we are already importing a uh, uh, something uh, index.js file right so that is nothing but the root reducer and now let's go to your browser and now let's uh, it's already reloaded this uh, this is our sign in file and now let's submit and check your uh, store and you can see we have got an auth with the auth name equal to res okay so this is uh, we are uh, so this is something we have but still uh, we are not getting our email and password right so there is some problem okay so let's go to the auth reducer and here we have state right okay the problem is uh, we are importing this state itself okay so let's say instead of uh, state we'll say okay let's um, let's split the state and also let's add the action action so we're going to say action dot payload. So you can see uh, if you don't remember, so let me show you. You can see auth dot action dot chase file, and here we are using payload as a variable, right? So let's go to your auth dot uh, reducer file, and here we'll say spreading uh, action dot payload. Also add a console so we can see the actions. Okay, so console dot log, and here we're going to say action save this now let's check in your browser and you can see we have got couple of actions already because of the library so let's reload it again and let's clear clean your uh, console now let's submit the request and it is not worked yet we have got auth we have got name res and this is actually not working let's see what is the problem so let's go to your sign in file and here we have got user login that is here and this is action
Now let's check. Here uh, you can see uh, when we are doing submit, we are getting email and password. It means our login action is executing successfully, but uh, not the reducer. Okay, so let's see what is the problem with the reducer is actually reducer is the one which will return the state of the application. Okay, so here you can see we have got auth.reducer and let's go to the sign in index.js file and here we are missing one thing that's a login so here we have to uh, use uh, hooks that is uh, dispatch okay so here we'll have to say const uh, dispatch and use dispatch okay and you have to import this hook from the react redux library you can see here use dispatch and now let's dispatch the action okay so say dispatch and write your uh, pass your login action as an argument okay now let's save this and you uh, let's reload your application and it's already reloaded actually clean your console submit and you can see we have got an error so this error is actions must be plain object use custom middleware for async action so we cannot uh, create async action uh, right now because uh, we are not uh, using plain objects okay so here you can see what is the problem is so when you are uh, so let's go to the uh, action okay so auth.actions.js so here we are returning a function with an argument dispatch and this dispatch is actually not available so how can we make this available and how can we allow async actions okay so for that what we need to do let's go to your store index uh, store index.js and here we have root reducer let's add a second argument so as suggested use a custom middleware for async actions so we'll say uh, middleware uh, that is apply middleware and you can import this apply middleware from the redux library you can see here and let's pass the thunk middleware so that is actually going to allow async actions thunk now let's save this now let's uh, see if it's working or not let's clean your console let's submit and you can see we have got our action so this is our first action type login request and payload is email password so guys uh, this is working fine and instead of returning just a plain uh, uh, like function so we can return an async function okay so we can perform api calls within this function so this is it uh, this is how we have set up our uh, uh, store within our application so guys thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe if you have any doubt any query i know this video might be complicated if you are not familiar with the redux and all just feel free to ask in the comment section okay bye bye